Hi everyone. I want to do a video about the fact that uh, a lot of these uh, precious metals are not lost in uh, manufacturing processes or you know waste. Uh, quite a few of them are being recycled now. And there was a fairly recent article that I thought I should bring to your attention of how this works. So there's uh, there's some numbers here that expl explain how much stuff we're actually uh, generating. We have uh, approximately 4.4 million tons of end of life and used electronic products recycled annually. It provides a much richer resource than the extraction of virgin material. I mean, think about it. You're not digging in a mountain. Uh, you're not having to uh, crush it and transport it. It's We know that there's precious metals. We don't even have to go looking for it. I mean, there's a lot of surveying and everything before you even get to digging in a mountain. So this is already known to contain precious metals. So that's a much better start. And you can uh, um, just have a much higher success rate. So they're saying that as much gold can be extracted from one metric ton of old computers it can be generated from 17 tons of ore. So that just shows how much more efficient it is. So it's a particularly rich source of precious metals with concentrations of 40 to 50 times more abundant than naturally occurring deposits. There are only are over 350 tons of gold and greater than 7,500 tons of silver used each year to make electronic products around the world. As a result, there's more than 21 billion of precious metals inventoried in these devices and 16 billion worth of gold and 5 billion worth of silver until the time they can be recycled. So they're kind of locked up and it's just a matter of uh, getting them back out, you know, when, when they're end of life. So the recovery of these precious metals is no small issue. While modern recycling facility can recover as much as 95% of gold in developing countries, the crude dismantling process may recover only 50% of this precious metal. Overall, current recovery rates of e-waste for processing is quite small. For example, in 2009, which is actually quite a long time ago, the report only 8% of cell phones were recycled, along with 17% of televisions and 38% of computers. Not enough overall devices find their way to recycling. Now, I will tell you that where I lived in Florida, the uh, trash site wanted you to bring all your electronic devices, car batteries, things like that to a, a separate location at the trash site where everything was recycled. And it didn't cost anything to bring the electronic devices there because they did not want them in the, uh, in the actual trash site itself, you know, buried in the ground. So, and then where I worked at, I worked for a defense contractor, every single thing that had potentially precious metals was sent to a recycling place. In fact, I would argue every large company does that. So where is the waste going to the trash dump? It's us. When we have an old cell phone, what do you do with it? Do you send it to where it gets recycled or do you just throw it in the trash can? When you have an old TV, does it go in the trash can or does it actually go to a recycling place? Um, it's, it's not that difficult. A lot of companies have this capability. So it's up to us to make sure that we are recycling. Uh, the big industries or big companies are already doing it. So right now they're recommending, you know, policies and procedures, and this is really at the city and state level. They need to do stuff like this to set up areas where we can drop off our stuff. But a lot of the large companies just automatically do it. So the interesting part of recycling e-waste, it's actually a very common sense approach. The printed circuit boards themselves, for the most part, uh, don't necessarily have precious metals. They have like copper, they have fiberglass, they have, uh, you know, like epoxies and things like that to make up the printed circuit board. But the components that are on the circuit board contain the precious metals. So you need to, uh, you know, separate those components and send the boards off to a different, uh, location and then the components go through additional processing of where they might crush it and sort it and use magnet screens, eddy currents, smelting process to get the precious metals. And then they're developing new processes of where they can uh, more quickly and inexpensively recover gold from old computers with less environmental impact because some of the uh, things were kind of noxious fumes and such and now they're just using fairly simple ways of uh, uh, getting it out. So anyways, 
Apple reported that it had recovered uh, 2,000, well, basically a ton of gold. So that's $40 million. So uh, part of that is just uh, for us to do our part. And I wanted to show you, there is a, a company, I just went looking for who are the major recycling companies and uh, this uh, Harris, I'm not sure how you pronounce it. They're well known and uh, they talk about uh, uh, recycling here. Oh, I can't, I can't get it to click because I'm in, uh, I highlighted the different things. So even in the processing of, you know, microelectronics and stuff, there's powders and paste that uh, containing precious metals that uh, sometimes they're in the shelf life and you send them back to get them recycled. Uh, residues from the production process, uh, like plating operations. You could have uh, gold plating operations that have a ton of gold in the uh, bath itself and you can recover that. Uh, off spec and end of life products, that's what I just talked about, uh, you know, shelf life type things. Platinum or ruthenium containing targets for the production of magnetic data storage disks. Um, in fact, I worked at Texas Instruments and I remember during a Christmas holidays or something, somebody stole the platinum target, which was a sputtering target and it was worth, even back in like 1980 to 82 sometime, it was hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, I don't know if they ever tracked them down or not, but uh, there's there's some tremendous costs involved in the manufacturing. You know, silver and gold targets for coatings, uh, platinum ro rhodium uh, sensors, uh, instruments and crucibles, stirrers and nozzles, all these things um, don't necessarily go in the dump. They go back through recycling and um, they go back and make precious uh, jewelry, uh, even uh, deliverable bars from all of this. It depends on what the need is. So just be aware. Let me see if I can get out of this mode because I want to click on some of these other things. I got in the highlight mode and I can't figure out how to get out now. Oh, there we go. All right. So recycling. So th these guys take care of everything. Recovering precious metals. Catalysts. jewelry yeah I think sometimes what happens is you remember when uh, the silver and gold prices go way high people will actually turn in their jewelry and some of it's like damaged and other things and so what they do is they take these uh, old jewelry and they melt them down and refine them and turn them into you know uh, delivery bars if they need to depending on the uh, the uh, quality of the materials but they're they're able to refine it and get it back so this is all out there and this is happening all the time around us so very few things are actually lost in in the ground and this is increasing and uh, we'll just see how it goes so I just wanted to bring this attention the other thing was I had uh, just pulled up the spot and the actual price of uh, uh, US Mint Eagles this morning and uh, on Silver Eagles, you're paying a 20% um, premium for buying them right now. On Gold Eagles, you're paying 5.5% premium. On Platinum, you're pay paying a 9% premium. And I know people are gonna come back and say, well, just buy the rounds, they have a lower premium on them. Yeah, but you don't get the, uh, the buyback cost. You come out ahead buying the Eagles, so that's why I only compare them. I don't even look at rounds because they're just not as valuable or well received and, and you just don't get the, it's two costs you have to consider, buy and sell costs. So anyways, uh, you're starting in a whole 20% on, uh, on silver. Um, so it just, again, gold, even though it costs more, you have a better starting point. So it's, everything's about you know, what you pay when you're investing. And uh, starting with a 20% uh, uh, hit right off the bat, that's hard to make up. So that means that, uh, in fact, you know, 1475 is the spot price this morning, and uh, 1804 was the price for the coin. So 
that's a big difference. That's over three dollars and uh, twenty nine cents, if I get that right in my head. But uh, you have to make that up in price increase. So it's going to have to be over twenty one dollars to break even. So, anyways, just keep that in mind. Hey, I hope everybody's treating you well. I hope you're doing well. Do the best you can, and God bless.